Hello, the purpose of this video is to explore taking the derivative using first principles of a uh, rational radical function. In this particular case, we have a square root, and it is in the denominator of our function. So that's going to create a lot of algebraic twists and turns. Uh, the first thing I do is I explore what technology has to say about the matter. I enter the function f of x, and I ask Desmos to uh, give me a graph of the derivative function. The blue is the derivative function. And it makes sense to me when I see um, here we have large uh, negative slopes, um, which correspond to very large negative numbers for derivative values. And as the function, as x increases, the function approaches zero. Um, we can see these slopes of the tangents get really, really small, and that's why the derivative approaches zero from the bottom. So, my conclusions before I get taken to the derivative is I'm always going to have negative values for no matter what x is for my derivative function. I also know that my derivative function is going to have to approach zero as x goes to infinity. So we're probably going to have more x's on the denominator so that as x gets really large, we divide by bigger and bigger numbers, much like we do in this case. So, I set up my derivative function, remember we take the average rate of change, and then we allow the change in x to approach zero by taking the limit. Um, so then the first thing we need to do after that is substitute our input arguments into the function. Notice again, uh, a little bit of mathematical trickery, dividing by h is multiplying by 1 over h. If you do this, it tends to declutter the process because then we have fewer nested fractions um, to deal with. So leave that 1 over h off to the side. It's also helpful to keep it there and not forget about it because um, that's kind of an important link to our derivative process. So the first thing that we faced with is the fact that we have these fractions that need to be subtracted and their denominators are different by just a little bit, that value of h. So, as with any fractions, to find a common denominator the quickest way, you simply multiply the two denominators together, and that will be the common denominator. So in order for that to happen here, we need to multiply by 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1, and to get that over here, we have to multiply by 2x plus h plus 1 on top and bottom. So effectively, we multiply by 1 here and by 1 here, but it enables us to have a common denominator, so we can subtract the numerators. That's what shows up here. Now we're in another tight spot because our goal is to divide this h into the numerator. So I need to get the radicals out of the numerator and we learned in class that the conjugate is the key for this to happen. So if I multiply by the conjugate of the numerator, both radicals here and here will be squared away, literally. So I have to make sure that I have the conjugate correct. This is a subtract, so this is add and we multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. Now, don't forget, with the numerators, or sorry, the denominators, um, we should spare ourselves the trouble of trying to simplify those denominators. They tend to clean up better after we take our limit. So be patient with those denominators and let them be for a little while. On the top, instead of having to write out all the foiling of, the, of this process, we recognize conjugate nature. When we multiply by the, the sum and difference of two numbers, we'll get the square of the first minus the square of the second. So that's what I write down, 2x plus 1 square root squared, and 2x plus h plus 1 square root squared. Essentially the radicals have gone away, and my denominator, ugly as it is, I'm going to be patient. So the next thing we need to do is uh, clear the screen, give us more room. Now I just need to distribute that uh, the negative and the 2, so I'm going to clean up my numerator a little bit. And I also distribute the negative, so that's why we have minus 1. There's a mistake-prone problem right there. But we can see it works out best because the 2x and 2x subtract out, the 1 and the 1 subtract out. And um, that leaves us with just negative 2h on the top. Now that there's nothing but 2h on the top, we can divide this h with that h and leave nothing but negative 2 in the numerator. And that horrible, wretched denominator carries forth. But the h has gotten out of here. So all we have to do now is allow h to approach 0 with whatever's left over. And we can see we get a lot of 2x plus 1s under the radicals. Here's where your algebra skills are really going to be tested. What happens when you multiply two of the same radical as opposed to what happens when you add two of the same radical? This is, uh, really separates people who understand algebra versus people who memorize algebra. This is collecting like terms. We have one, two different of these. Here we're multiplying the square root of 2x plus 1 times the square root of 2x plus 1 is the square root of 2x plus 1 squared. So effectively uh, squares out the radical. 
So in the first set, we have 2x plus 1, the radical went away. In the second case, when we add, we have two sets of square root of 2x plus 1s. Now this is all multiplication. This, this item times the number 2 times this item. And so with all multiplication, we can multiply and divide in any order. So I'm going to divide the 2s out now. And that, technically, is the derivative. However, this will get you a B plus, which sounds cruel, but uh, I need to show you a couple things extra that need to get you into the I know I understand calculus mode here. So if you can do all this algebra, that's very, very good. Here's one step or two that you can take further. First is to recognize that 2x plus 1 is the same base in each case. So this is a number, and this is a number. Each of them is to a power. This is 2x plus 1 to the 1 power, and this is 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power. We should know that when you multiply numbers of the same base, you add the exponents, so this is the same as 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves, or 1 and a half power, which can be written as negative 2x plus 1 to the negative 3 halves power. To prove it, I go back to Desmos and I type in my function, negative, and I see it yields the same graph. What we could also do here is mention that this derivative function is always negative because square roots are always positive. So this is going to be a negative number all the time. And the bigger x gets, the bigger denominator gets. The bigger the denominator gets, the closer to zero my function gets. So there's no question that this is correct. So to go from a b plus to an a plus, you need to do just a couple extra things to demonstrate you've learned the algebra coming up to this class and that you can understand that your results are reasonable or correct. Thanks for watching.